Hey guys, welcome back to Daniel's Tech World here on YouTube. My name is Daniel Rosal, and I want to do one more video today about burning uh, M disks uh, using, or Blu ray for that matter, because from a technical perspective, they're both detecting, as you can see, the M disk will detect as just a Blu ray. Um, and for that kind of very basic purpose on the software compatibility level, uh, it's basically a Blu-ray. Um, so this is, I did one video about this a couple of years ago, and that was when I had my old burner. And when that was stopping its uh, useful working, it broke down the LG burner. Uh, I initially thought it was actually a software error until I realized the thing wouldn't work on any operating system and any computer. Uh, that resulted in about 10 coasters. But um, when I was trying to, you know, figure out stuff in K3B, I kind of looked into a few settings that I thought might be worth highlighting. And uh, this is a very much open to contribution, of course, if you have thoughts on what's the best way to burn an M-Disc in K3B, uh, shout out. And uh, the other thing I would say is that for the BDXL media, I personally usually burn those discs through a virtual machine and sometimes even the 25 gig Blu-rays. I did a separate video about that. Uh, it is no problem to burn optical media in a Linux host through a Windows guest. Uh, it works just fine. And you can use obviously Nero and all the different uh, all the different burning platforms and image burn and what, what have you. So the first thing that I um, do is uh, recommend doing is when you've popped in your Blu-ray medium, check the supported write speeds. And I just did a video about why I think it's... Uh, I generally accept it as better. Everything in optical media is controversial, uh, I've discovered. Some people uh, will argue that uh, you want to use the fastest write speed, but I've seen more people argue that the slowest one is actually the way to go. So the M disks are pretty slow. They only go up to 6x, um, but I think as far as I can remember. Uh, so 2x will make the process even more tedious, but uh, you might, you know, at the hopefully getting better, getting a better write. Uh, if you feel that for the higher speed is better, again, uh, shout out in the comments. Um, okay, so one, a couple more little bits and pieces to know about. So by going into configure K3B, there's one setting I recommend turning on under advanced settings, and that is show advanced GUI elements. What what toggling this on will do is let you choose the burning backend, uh, the actual uh, toolkit that the burner uses to write the media. So uh, I recommend uh, turning this one on. And one other thing that I've seen people recommend in troubleshooting land is looking at the permissions. Uh, the permissions here, uh, these are the programs that you have that it's working with because actually the burning program um, uses a lot of external libraries. Uh, and the nice thing about K3B is you can see these. Um, if you go into permissions here, you can see the permissions for Grow ISOFS are set to 4711. And um, I've seen a, a trouble. someone said on one of the Ubuntu forums they're having trouble with K3B and they recommended changing these permissions. So all you need to do is click change permissions. Then you need to put in your password and that will elevate you to sudo and uh, you can change the permissions. But if everything's working okay, uh, don't change the defaults is my recommendation. So then click apply and okay. So we're ready to go with this burn. Uh, I'm doing one more of my uh, wedding photos because I'm moving my last cloud storage onto optical and I figured I may as well, if I'm taking away one copy for of these for backups, I'll create another one and I'm gonna send this to my in-laws in the mail. Uh, so we are ready to go. It's a bunch of photographs, uh, my wedding photos, literally, and uh, filling up about half of this M disk. Now I did another video with my full, you know, best practice archiving creating process, and I talked about using DV Disaster to create um, error correction code. You can do that. I'm not going to do it for this uh, particular duplicate of the data. So we're all good. Wedding volume name is set, and now we can go into burn. Okay, so here is the uh, burn menu. Now we can set, firstly, the first thing I'm gonna do is set this to 2X. And the second thing is the writing app. Um, now that we have turned on the advanced GUI elements, we can see this. And the default selection is auto. And here we, here, here we get into a storm in a teacup style Linux controversy, whereas each of these programs, CD Record and Grow ISOFS have proponents. Um, the one I use personally is Grow ISO FS. Uh, CD Record, it works across all different types of optical media. This one does only DVDs and Blu-ray. Um, I 
can't remember why I just read a bunch of threads about this and well, a few threads. And then I was like, all right, all right, grow ISOFS. So I'm just sticking with that. And I've heard from people that that's more reliable. But if you have uh, reasons why you can recommend CD Record CD Record, or CDR Skin for M-Discs and Blu-ray over, over uh, grow ISOFS, uh, let me know. But the nice thing about this advanced thing is you can choose the back end. So, okay. So we've reduced the speed down to 2x. I've gone for grow ISOFS. Um, and the writing mode here, we've no options. I like to go through all these tabs before burning. This just shows you where, uh, even if you don't create an ISO, the operating system does it for you in temporary storage that then gets uh, that then gets deleted when the thing is finished. So there's nothing to see here. We can't change anything. Um, in file system, this is there's actually a little bit of stuff here under the hood that you can you can uh, tinker with if you want to. For one, uh, you can add a bit of data here in the volume name. And uh, I have talked about my use of VVV before. Um, it's a cataloging tool for physical media that does work with Linux. I thought that would have opened, but it doesn't seem that the uh, little thing I've set is working. Um, and you can uh, give volume names. You can actually put that as made made data that you record directly onto the disk using this. So popping open um, my VVV tool, I can just scroll through my library here. This is a separate piece of software, just to be clear. And I can see that I'm onto disk 117 of the ones I've cataloged. So this is going to be, I use this little identification system so it's easier to find stuff. So as the last disk was A116, this is going to be disk A117. So I can put that actually in the volume set name A117. You know, I can put my own name as the publisher and... Uh, we can just leave the rest of the stuff. Um, so the other thing is file system, because I use Linux on all my computers, and if I ever need these as reco to recover from, I, I personally choose Linux slash Unix only, so that's a default change from the option here. Uh, there's also UDF as the, as the system if you're using uh, UDF, which is the big files. Um, and then there's a custom thing, which I have no idea what the hell it does. This is the beauty of Linux. You get to see all these things and learn about them if you feel so inclined. So I do Linux, Unix only. Um, then you can go even more modular. Now, this is actually a really important thing. You see this option here, preserve file permissions for backup. So if you are using this for backup, now I'm using it for archive. We talked about the, the difference before. Backup is rolling back a file system. Archive, you're just preserving files. So by default, this is not ticked. So that's actually like kind of a big deal. Uh, if you need a backup, there is a good chance you need the file permissions on the data in order for it to be useful in a recovery. So let me just show you, just check actually what if that's the same thing for Linux. Yeah, for Linux, uh, for Linux and Windows, it's also not ticked on by default. So you might want to turn that on. Um, okay, so I'm going to go for Linux only, and then in custom, again, uh, you can do, and I have to be honest, I don't know what some of these things are, so you can fill in my knowledge if you do know. Um, the only thing that struck me as potentially very important here was the file permissions. There is di three different levels of ISO 9660, which is the ISO standard for the file system. Um, and then there's some more things, which I also have no idea what they do. So, uh, that is, uh, that is it. So then you have uh, symbolic links. You have an option here. I'm going to do no change. There aren't any sim links here, but if you do have them, you can uh, choose what to do with them. Like you can say that you should follow them. And the white space handling is, uh, I keep it as no change. Finally, in miscellaneous, sele miscellaneous settings, we have data track mode is set to auto. Multi-session mode, um, I believe, is by default auto, but I like to specify that there is no multi-session uh, because M-Discs are were media, the right ones, so we just to tell it, uh, don't do that. And then we're, uh, this is, we're, we're good to go. We have the speed set. I'm using Grow ISO FS. I'm writing 10 gigs onto a 25 gig, and you can see the usable portion is only 23.3. And uh, you can also save these presets by clicking this. If you want to use them at a later date, I'll click save and it'll save them into the uh, software. So we're good to go. I'm going to click on burn and we're going to watch as the process starts. So you can just see here what's going on. Um, we're using Grow ISO FS. We're writing to BDR. This is an M disk, just to be clear, or what's lab what was labeled as an M disk. Um, and it's firing up MK ISO FS. And it's going to take a little bit. The writing speed is set correctly as 2x rather than 4x. And um, 
that is basically it. So it's actually closer to 13 gigs and uh, we're now in progress. Um, so this has, this kind of bunch of settings has worked for me the last few times uh, that I've written um, M disks. And as far as I know, if these are the settings I think work, again, if you think uh, a few other ones, uh, let me know, but hopefully this will be good for creating the, this media using uh, your Ubuntu Linux computer or another Linux distro. Thanks for watching. If you want to get more videos from me, uh, do please consider subscribing to this channel. Until next time.